Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of PowerCore Productions and Podcastings, where in today's video we are going to be continuing Naruto Polaris, What If Hanabi Hyuga Was Born First, Part 10. As always, if you're new to the channel or if you're a regular and you enjoy what we have to offer, then please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share, and hit that bell for post notifications so you can stay up to date on everything that is Power Core Productions and Podcasting that has to come out now and in the future. Where we last left off with our series, we covered the events of the Kaze Kage Rescue Mission. Naruto now being on a new Team 7 with Hanabi and with the reformed Dosu, who spent the last two and a half years serving probation in the Hidden Leaf and being trained under Kakashi, who believed that he could see potential in the young boy and by training him, it could give him a chance to redeem himself and to turn against his former master in Orochimaru. The Kazekage rescue mission was successful, but not without its own share of tragedies. While Gara was saved, ultimately the One Tails was lost. But Team 7 did gain some crucial information. Information of a potential meeting at Tenchi Bridge. A meeting that could lead them back to Sasuke. However, there are forces in the shadows that are working against our heroes. Not just that of the higher council of the Hidden Leaf, but even the Hyuga clan as well. How will Naruto and his allies be able to overcome these obstacles as they attempt to move one step closer to their goal of bringing Sasuke back home? For all this and more, stay tuned as we now continue. Naruto Polaris what if Hanabi Hyuga was born first? Part 10. As always, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. As Team 7 arrives back to the village hidden in the leaves, Kakashi would be taken to the infirmary immediately where he would be treated and given a chance to recover, following his fight against Deidara along with Naruto. Having been forced to use the Mangekyo Sharingan, Kakashi found himself out of commission. Naruto, Hanabi, and Dosu would all give a debriefing to the 5th Hokage Tsunade of everything that happened in the sand, but even more so, they would give her the news of what they had learned from Sasori of his intended meeting at Tenchi Bridge with his spy, who was set to have ties to Orochimaru. This news was sudden for Tsunade, however she had to keep herself composed. This was more of a lead than anything, an opportunity. Of course, all of Team 7 was still ready to go, for the most part, but they were going to need a fourth member for the team a trusted Jonin that could lead them. Tsunade would tell them that they would have three days to prepare before heading out, and that in that time she would get together and find a Jonin who would lead their team on this mission. As Tsunade was doing so, unknown to her and to Team 7, Danzo was listening not too far away. After having heard the news, he would call for an emergency meeting with the leaders of the Hyuga clan. It would be at this meeting that Danzo would look to put his own plans into motion. Hayashi Hyuga, it seems as though your daughter is more and more rampant with each day. And what do you mean by this, Lord Danzo? You haven't heard? It seems your daughter is going on yet another crucial mission. Another one so soon? Yes, and it involves the Uchiha. All the leaders of the Hyuga clan would tense up at that name. They remembered all too well the state that Hanabi was left in after a fight against Sasuke at the Valley of the End. They were not too fond of him at all, and now she was going on another mission, one that could potentially see her come into contact with him once more. 
And what is the meaning of this Donzo? It seems that they are going to be meeting with a spy in the land of grass, at a place known as Tinchi Bridge. There, they will be meeting with a spy who is said to have ties to Orochimaru, and thus ties to Sasuke Uchiha. The members of the Hyuga would speak up immediately. They didn't want Hanabi being involved in such things. After all, she was going to be the next leader of the Hyuga clan. And also, if anyone was going to get vengeance against the Uchiha, they wanted to see that it was done by them personally. We all know that Tsunade throws her weight around as Hokage. While I will admit she has made your daughter very strong, if left to her own devices she may pick up some bad habits. I would suggest that you leave things in my hands. Although I will ask one thing of you though. And what is it that you want, Donzo? Hiyashi would ask. Provide me a young Hyuga, one whom you deem capable of taking on a task of assassination. If you give him into my hands, I will promise you the head of Sasuke Uchiha. The Hyuga thought this over briefly. They knew that even if they tried to bar Hanabi from going, she would leave of her own volition or have the aid of the Hokage. In the end, if they could come with a plan that could get them what they wanted, then it was one that they were willing to take. As a result, a deal was struck, and the Hyuga would select a member of the main branch to serve under Danzo for this mission. They selected another young member from the main branch. He was about a year older than Hanabi, around the same age as Neji. He was a member of the main branch, and he, while he had gone to the academy, he ultimately didn't serve in a ninja capacity. He took missions, but he mainly served in the household of the main branch. His name was Ko Hyuga. Ko was a lot more of your traditional Hyuga, to say the least. He believed in the order of things. He didn't feel as though anything ever had to change with how the Hyuga were ran. And yet even more so, if there was one thing that he found great annoyance in, it was Hanabi. Like him, she too were a part of the main branch. However, even from a young age, she always spouted off nonsense, like trying to change the way of the Hyuga. It made no sense to him. He blamed her influence because of that of those she grew up with. Being around that Uchiha and that Uzumaki, it didn't do any good. Sure, the Uzumaki was somewhat respectable, although it was mostly thanks to Hanabi's influence that Naruto stopped pulling pranks at such a young age and took his ninja career seriously. For the most part, Naruto was tolerable. He wasn't particularly liked, but he wasn't disliked either. He had some respect. But what Sasuke had done was unforgivable, almost taking the life of Hanabi. And what was even worse was that she wasn't even all that upset. She didn't want vengeance against the Uchiha, she wanted to save him. That, that in and of itself was disrespectful. But of course, Ko would bite his tongue as not to speak ill of the person who would, in all likelihood, be the next leader of the Hyuga clan. Although now, he had a different mission that would be given to him. As he met with Donzo, Donzo informed him that he was going to be putting on a team. A team that would seek for the elimination of some of Konoha's problems, and for some of the problems of the Hyuga. Ko would be told of his members, as he met with two of them. One was a boy from the Abarame clan. And the other, a boy who had an expression. He smiled, but even for Ko, without his Byakugan, he could see through something so fake. The boy's name was Sai. And the three of them, they would be given their mission. 
Of course, they would have to act quickly, as it wouldn't be too long before it would have to be carried out. In the meantime, Naruto and Dosu prepared for their mission as well. Dosu didn't have much to say. Naruto tried to speak to him from time to time, but Dosu simply kept quiet. The only thing going through his mind was the thought of seeing Sasuke Uchiha again. The thought of seeing Orochimaru. The one who betrayed him. Who betrayed his comrades. They fought for the Sound Village because they genuinely believed in their home. And yet they were cast aside. They were used and discarded as though they were nothing. Dosu could only think of one thing. And that was vengeance in the worst way. Eventually, Team 7 would be given their new captain. This of course, would turn to be Yamato. Unlike in the original timeline, Yamato wouldn't have to worry too much about the team's chemistry, since for the most part they got along fairly well. Dosu and Naruto only bickered from time to time, but they were both scared straight by Yamato quickly. But even then, their dynamic wasn't anything like the original Team 7's. With their mission in hand and knowing what they needed to do, they would make their way to Tenchi Bridge, going over the game plan for the meeting with the spy and how things were going to be carried out. While they were traveling, Hanabi would be tracking with her Byakugan to make sure that the coast was clear. Also, with Dosu's enhanced sound ability, he was able to hear things from miles away. So, their sensory team was up to snuff, not needing to worry about anyone getting the drop on them. For the most part, the game plan would be the same as in the original. However, because Dosu and Hanabi both fought against sorcery, the details for making the Hiroko puppet shell as a disguise would be in even greater detail, and Dosu would be able to help in imitating sorcery's voice flawlessly. Naruto didn't have much to do. Of course, he was going to be a part of the team as the muscle after all. If anything were to happen, Naruto would have the power to back them up. But even still, this was something he would be in the background for. Eventually, the day of the mission would come. Naruto would be a bit nervous. If this was really going to work, then there was no telling of where this might lead them. Could they potentially see Sasuke again? Naruto didn't get the full details of what happened during the Sasuke retrieval mission, as it was Hanabi that confronted Sasuke at the Valley of the End, while Naruto stayed behind to fight against Kimimaru, eventually alongside Gara. Naruto always ran through his mind if he had made the right decision that day as captain. It was Naruto that led the team to go after Sasuke. It was Naruto who ultimately allowed Hanabi to go off on her own. It was split second, and before he even had a chance to object, Hanabi was already storming off, telling Naruto that she could handle it. But if Naruto had done things differently, maybe he should have been the one to go and fight Sasuke instead. Maybe things wouldn't have gotten to this point. Hanabi knew that Naruto felt like this. She could see the worry in his eyes. You need to relax, Naruto. Uh, huh? I am. I I'm fine. No, you're not. You're worried. I don't need my Byakugan to see that. Is it that obvious? Very. Now, what's bothering you? It's just... I just... I should have been the one to fight Sasuke. What? I should have been the one to fight Sasuke. I just... I hate the fact that I left it all to you. I was the captain of that mission. I should have done a better job and I know it. Naruto, you shouldn't beat yourself up. I'm a strong girl and I'm capable. I know, I don't doubt that about you at all. I know it was a hard fight for you. I just wish I could have been there. I wish I could have done more. I mean, I feel like in the end of the day, I was just lucky. Lucky that we all survived. It could have been far worse. Hanabi would grab Naruto by the cheeks. Naruto, you don't have to worry. I know, it was a tough mission for all of us. But still, it's nothing that we couldn't handle. And even now, 
I know that we're going to be all right because we have each other. We're a team. We always look out for one another and we always stand and fight together. As long as we do that, we have nothing to worry about. Trust me. Naruto grinned and agreed. Dosu, even from far ahead, asking if they were done with their little love moment. The two of them blushed instantly as they yelled at Dosu to shut up. Naruto being a bit more bashful as he had never thought about it up until now, but Hanabi definitely looked a lot more... Ooh. Maybe when this was over they could get ramen. But for now, they had to focus on the mission at hand. Yamato would go into his disguise and would wait at the bridge as a hooded figure would arrive to meet them. Hanabi would have the team farther back than before, her Byakugan activated. She was focused primarily on the bridge, but she could see all around her. It was because of this that another group that was hiding in the shadows had to stay back a certain distance. And one of their members, while wearing an Ambu mask, had a blindfold underneath. Is it necessary for us to stay this far back? It is. Lady Hanabi's Byakugan perception is perfect. If we go any closer, we may get caught in her range. I see. And the reason for your blindfold? It's to hide my own Byakugan and my identity. There's no point in us being revealed all too far from now. As far as they're concerned, they're on their mission and we're on ours. You're very perceptive, you know. I guess. Are you prepared? The boy would pull out a large scroll as he began to write in it. We will be. And the other boy would prepare his insects as they hid and wait. The only thing left to do now was stay in position until their signal was given. Yamato would meet with the hooded figure on the bridge. The meeting going the same as in canon, up until the point of the betrayal, as the hooded figure was revealed to be none other than Kabuto, who was revealed to have been a double agent, and that he had actually been planning on betraying Sasori for his allegiance was with Orochimaru, who also appeared on the bridge beside Kabuto. Ah, <sighs> Tenzin, or Yamato as you are now called these days. It's good to see that one of my experiments has actually survived. Orochimaru. Yes, and do tell your three other little rats to come out from behind the curtain. Yamato raised his hand and quickly all three would be standing on the bridge. Unlike in the original, Naruto would not be as bloodlusted, nor would he be drawing on the power of the Nine Tails right away. The emotional damage of losing to Sasuke doesn't exist here, because Naruto never fought Sasuke in the Valley of the End. In fact, in the grand scheme of things, while Naruto and Sasuke definitely had a rivalry, it wasn't as strong as you might think it is, and I'll briefly explain why. Remember in part 1, when our trio began as friends, it was Naruto who was playing the third wheel to this friendship group, because Hanabi and Sasuke both rival one another in the academy, one of the Sharingan and one of the Byakugan. Naruto had always been trying to play catch up to the two of them, that's why Hanabi took on the role of fighting Sasuke at the Valley of the End, while Naruto stayed behind to fight against Kimimaru. Because of this, while Naruto does have strong feeling for Sasuke, seeing him as a friend and wanting to save him, it's not to the point of feeling completely lost. However, that feeling, even though it falls to Hanabi, she's able to better control herself. However, Orochimaru still had someone he could antagonize, as he looked over towards a familiar face, wrapped in bandages and now dressed in that of a leaf uniform, with his sound gauntlet in his right hand, and 
wearing a familiar scarf. Ah, <sighs> Dosu. So you've chosen to become a pet for the Hidden Leaf Village. Lord Orochimaru. It seems as though you've underestimated me. Thinking that I was nothing more but a mere pawn that would die. No. I've survived for one reason, one reason only. To make you regret your decision. Is that so? Well, if you think that you can entertain me, then by all means, go ahead. Kabuto would make another charge instantly. Using his chakra scalpel, he would go in for a strike. However, Dosu would pull out the sword gifted to him by Kakashi. The short sword and the scalpel would collide with one another as Naruto and Hanabi would go charging towards Orochimaru. Orochimaru would back away as the two engaged in a flurry of taijutsu, Hanabi activating her Byakugan, and Naruto slowly tapping into the power of the Nine Tails. Orochimaru dodged their attacks as the two of them charged from both sides, Hanabi from the left and Naruto from the right. Naruto would pull out his sword from his back as he went swinging towards Orochimaru. Orochimaru dodging at the last moment only to be met by Hanabi as she attempted to use the gentle fist strikes. She would send out an air palm that would collide and hit him in the back as Naruto would go in with his blade attempting to stab him in the gut. However, before Orochimaru could be stabbed, he would spit up the grass sword, the sword of Kusanagi. As he held it in hand, he would match Naruto with the blade. Locking in with the two of them, they would begin a brief exchange of swordsmanship as Hanabi, when Naruto went low, would go in for a high strike of her own. She would use the twin dragon fist, blocking away the blade itself with her mere hand coated with chakra. Orochimaru could feel the strength behind each attack that Hanabi was able to send out. This monstrous strength. You've been trained by Tsunade, haven't you? I have. I must say, you're not nearly as dangerous as you were in the Forest of Death, Orochimaru. Oh, we're just getting started, my young Yuga. There's no need for me to bring out all of my demons. Orochimaru would go in for another strike towards Hanabi. However, Hanabi would counter by using the lightning style static rotation, as a dome of lightning would then emerge, causing Orochimaru to be sent flying back in the opposite direction. Naruto would come flying out of the air, bringing out his blade and extending it with wind chakra. The blade would double in length, and Orochimaru would match it with the Kusanagi blade. However, the moment that their blades were locked with one another, Naruto would create hand signs in the midst of the attack. Multi-Shadow Clone Jutsu! In an instant, over 50 Naruto's would then emerge, Orochimaru being surrounded as he regrouped with his blade. All the Naruto's looked at him fiercely. All of them drawing on the power of the Nine Tails. Well now, it seems as though the demon has learned a few tricks. Show me what you can do, Naruto. All of the Naruto's would go charging from every side. Orochimaru fighting and blocking and fending all of them off as Hanabi waited to find her opportunity. As the Naruto's all went charging, Orochimaru would fend them off one by one. Two Naruto's would come from behind with two large Rasengans, Orochimaru jumping into the air to dodge them, as three more Naruto's with their sword in hand would all go in for a strike. However, Orochimaru would stretch out his neck, moving it with the blade in his mouth as he decapitated all three of the clones before finally another Naruto would jump up from behind, holding a demon wind shuriken, as he threw it towards Orochimaru. 
Naruto would quickly run through a series of hand signs as he yelled, Ninja Art, Shao Shuriken Clone Jutsu, Demon Wind Shuriken, Multi Strike. Instantly, the Demon Wind Shurikens would all multiply into a multitude of Demon Wind Shurikens, all large and aiming directly towards Orochimaru. Orochimaru would back away once gaining enough distance as he would use the Rashomon wall summoning, summoning one giant wall to capture all of the shurikens that went barreling towards him. Only the wall would not stand for too long, as Naruto would use the giant Rasengan to slam through and break it. In the midst of the dust and the rubble, Orochimaru would send out his neck to try to bite away at the neck of Naruto. However, the moment that he did so, Naruto was simply smirk, as at the last moment he yelled, Wild Lion's Main Jutsu! Naruto's yellow hair would then grow, surrounding him like a spiky porcupine. Orochimaru would get a mouthful of hair that was as hard as steel, and was as sharp as a blade. He would soon retract his head, as he could feel his walls of the mouth starting to be filled with blood. Coughing away, he would see now that he had, had a lot of influence from Jiraiya. Naruto would then use another flurry of clones. The clones would all go moving towards Orochimaru as they continued their assault with the Shadow Shuriken clone Jutsu. Orochimaru would then match by using a horde of snakes that would all go barreling towards the Naruto's. However, one Naruto in particular would move to the front. As Orochimaru got a closer look, he realized that the Naruto had Byakugan. The transformation jutsu would be undone and would be revealed to be Hanabi, as she used the static lightning style rotation, blowing away all of the snakes before finally Orochimaru was left to his own device, as Hanabi would create five lightning style shadow clones, all of them that would go charging towards Orochimaru at once. Orochimaru tried to get away, however, before he could even have a chance to do so, two hands would grab him from underground, as he heard from under the dirt, Ninja Art, Earth Style, Headhunter Jutsu! Orochimaru would take his blade and stab it into the ground. As it crashed into the skull of the Naruto, the hands would disappear into a puff of smoke. However, as he looked up, he realized that it was too late. Hanabi and her clones had finally gotten close. All of them gathered together as the six would use the lightning style overdrive cloak level 3 before all would yell in unison. Eight trigrams, 128 palms, times six. All of the Hanabis would use the eight trigrams, 128 palms, striking away at Orochimaru over and over again. Orochimaru could feel that his body was at his limit. Not only was her strength enhanced by the lightning style overdrive, but also by the monstrous strength that she gained from using the chakra that she had had stored away with her training from Tsunade. With chakra control, it made every strike feel as though Orochimaru were being jabbed by a giant metal spike. All the clones would charge at Orochimaru to the point where he would have no choice but to leave his body as from out of his mouth went flying another Orochimaru. In the meanwhile, Yamato and Dosu would have their own hands full as they were fighting against Kabuto. Kabuto trying to take advantage of Dosu and his insecurities. In order to try to counter the two of them, Kabuto would use a scroll. As he undid the seal, five bodies would emerge from the scroll. They were lifeless corpses. As Kabuto used the corpse reanimation jutsu, 
He would use the five corpses to fight on his behalf, Yamato binding and holding him in place as Dosu went one-on-one -on -one against Kabuto. You know, Kabuto, in the end, everything you've tried to do has all been for nothing. Shut up, Four Eyes. What? If the truth hurts, tell it. In the end of the day, you just couldn't hack it. But I know how it feels. In the end, neither one of us can compare to the Uchiha. He's truly a prime specimen. Although I will say, your fight with him at the tuning exams, it did serve one purpose. You tested the vessel well. So in that regard, you could say that you fulfilled your duty. You should be honored. You played a small role in Orochimaru's grand plans. That's what you think, Kabuto? You think that I only exist to fulfill Orochimaru and his stupid desires? As the two of their blades connected, a loud ringing could be heard. As Kabuto went to go and try to clutch at his ear, Dosu would match him with another kick striking him down as Kabuto tried to get back to his feet. You of all people should know, Kabuto. I don't forgive so easily. If there's one thing that's kept me going for all this time, it was to see the look on Lord Orochimaru's face when I take away the one thing that means the world to him. And just what do you mean by that? Isn't it obvious? I'm going to kill Sasuke Uchiha. And I'm going to do it in front of Lord Orochimaru. <laughs> you kill Sasuke? Huh. It seems your time in Konoha has made you a comedian. Although... I don't think it should be your new main source of income, because you're not really good at it. Oh, you think it's a joke. Dosu held up his right arm as the gauntlet was shown and began to tremor. It's a shame, really, because it's a joke that you won't get to see the punchline for. Dosu was about to bring down his hand to Kabuto. However, before he could, instantly he would feel himself being frozen in place. He looked to see that there was something that was binding him. Ninja art. Ink capture jutsu. It's time to move. Instantly, the three shadows would emerge. Yamato had no idea what was going on. Three kunais would be thrown at the bridge as it exploded. Yamato would begin to descend and fall down into the wires below. As he used his wood style to catch himself to the side of the chasm. While Dosu was still on the remaining part of the bridge, another figure would move in front of him. Gentle Fist, 8 trigrams, 128 palms. Dosu would feel all of his chakra points being struck 128 times as he found himself almost impossible to move. He would fall over to the ground as his consciousness slowly began to fade as he looked up to the masked figure that looked down upon him. I don't care what the Okage says. As far as I'm concerned, you're nothing but a traitor and we're merely taking out the trash. Kabuto slowly got back to his feet as he tried to make sense of what was going on. What's the meaning of this? We come on behalf of a friend. Lord Dunzo. Dunzo. And that means... 
we're on your side. And, as a show of good faith, we've captured this here shinobi for you. I'm sure you can use him for whatever you have planned. He was nothing but a traitor to begin with. No matter what the Hokage decides, once an enemy, always an enemy. And he belongs to you, although now you consider him an enemy. So, you can get your own vengeance however you like. They picked up the unconscious Dosu, slinging him over one of their shoulders. In the meanwhile, in the midst of their fight, Naruto and Hanabi would both be feeling a bit out of breath. Orochimaru was preparing to launch another strike. However, he would get a signal from Kabuto. Understanding, he smirked as he looked back towards the two. It's been fun playing with you, Hanabi, Naruto. And I must say you have me quite entertained. And because of that, I'll leave you a parting gift. And I will leave you some advice. If that was the best the two of you can do, then you should forget about Sasuke now. Because at your current power, the two of you together couldn't bring him down. Orochimaru smirked. As he left a trail of blood, he would summon a large snake to attack. Both Naruto and Hanabi would have to fight off the snake summoning as Orochimaru disappeared, leaving alongside Kabuto and the three mass shinobi as they had now taken Dosu as their prisoner and they began to make their way back to their hideout. As they did so, Naruto and Hanabi would go for a final strike against the large snake with Naruto using his blade, he would cut off the head of the beast, slaying it and cutting it down in size. Eventually, the two would meet back with Yamato, as Yamato explained to them what had happened, explaining the three that attacked and that had taken Dosu. Naruto and Hanabi would both be worried about this, but what would be even more concerning was when Yamato explained that just briefly, one of the masked figures showed that he was capable of using the gentle fist, the same that Hanabi used. Hanabi wasn't able to tell what was going on, but if what Yamato had said was true, it meant that whoever this group was that attacked had a Hyuga with them. But why would they? Yamato explained that they were in Ambu Mass, so he had no idea of knowing who their identities were. There was no Hyuga in the Ambu as far as he knew. This had to be the work of something else. Something even more sinister was afoot. Naruto and Hanabi were worried. Now not only for their mission, but for the safety of Dosu as well. Even though it was brief, they considered him a comrade, and to some extent even a friend. They were already trying to save Sasuke, and now they had to save him too, as the group would rush off and follow the trail to find them immediately. In the meanwhile, as Orochimaru and his team made it to the hideout, Dosu could slowly feel a power, a power that if it was who he thought it was, put everything into a new light. Perhaps his attempts to kill the Uchiha were laughable after all. This concludes Naruto Polaris Shippuden. What if Hanabi Hyuga was born first? Part 10. As always, if you enjoyed today's video and everything else that we have to offer, then please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share, and hit that bell for post notifications so you can stay up to date on everything that is Power Core Productions and Podcasting stats to come up now and in the future. 
Stay tuned for tomorrow's video as we continue. Naruto The Tale of Two Sages What if Naruto was Luis's familiar? Part 8 But anyway, that's going to do it for the end of today's video. I'm Javon Harrington with PowerCore Productions and Podcastings. Signing off, and I'll see you next time.